Okay, so we're going to be talking today about how to write good essay and long response items for your um, content knowledge lab and for constructed response items. So an essay long response is a front answer that's at least a paragraph long. And again, what that looks like depends on developmental level. Um, you're asking students to really elaborate um, on their thinking. It could also include things that aren't necessarily traditional essay, things like a diagram, a graphic organizer, an outline, illustrating a concept. So I've seen students do things like draw the water cycle or um, complete a Venn diagram. So thinking a little bit outside the box here, um, rather than just having them write a traditional essay. So what are some advantages? Why would we have students write essays? Um, we can really assess their thinking process. We can assess critical thinking, analysis, deep understanding. Um, it does take less time than writing selected response items um, and allows flexibility in responses differentiation. So students can respond to essays at their level and you can assess them at their own levels. Um, so the ELL and the ESE students could have more support with their essays. So I could provide send stems to my ELLs. I could um, allow my ESE students to respond um, with a graphic organizer or respond orally rather than written, those kinds of things. So some disadvantages to essays. Um, they do take longer to answer, so I can't ask as many essay questions as I could multiple choice questions in a, in a um, testing time period. They also take a lot longer to assess. So as a teacher, you have to think about how much time am I going to have to grade these. Um, they can rely on secondary skills. So if I'm a history teacher and I really want to assess history knowledge, if I have an essay, then I'm really also assessing things like writing and spelling. However, it might be also really important that students know how to write about history or that they can write about science. So those secondary skills might be important for you to assess in your content area. Um, the scoring is more subjective, which can lead to less reliability. Um, so let's talk about some guidelines for essay and long response items. You want to um, construct the item to elicit the skills identified in the learning objective. So thinking of going back to your learning objective, make sure that the skills you're asking for match. So compare, contrast, explain, define, analyze. Um, only assess things that have to do with deep understanding or application. If I can assess it in an easier way, I want to use something besides an essay. So if the learning objective is something like recall or list or, you know, um, yeah, then I want to use something that's easier than an essay, right? Okay. Um, write the items so students can clearly understand the task. Um, that'll increase the validity of the responses. So give clear directions without giving away the answer. And that is sometimes difficult for students to understand what I mean here. Um, the assessment shouldn't be a surprise. So make sure you tell them, I, you know, I'm looking for five paragraphs. Um, I'm going to be assessing your grammar. Make sure you have an introduction. Make sure that you argue your case, make sure that you include details, the things that you're looking for in your task, make sure you're telling them. Um, so here's an example. Um, in solving an equation in the form a squared, ax squared bx plus c equals zero, when is it better to factor the equation and when should you use the quadratic formula? Be sure to give an example of each and write three to four sentences. Um, versus in solving the equation, should a student factor the equation or use a quadratic formula? So in the, in the first one, I'm really telling students what I'm looking for. I didn't give them the answer, but I told them what I'm asking. So the more specific you can be in your question, the easier it's going to be for you to grade A. And B, the more valid your responses are because you're going to know, did the student really know the answer or did they know the answer and they just weren't, they just didn't put it down on paper, right? So rather than saying, you know, describe reptiles, if I say, describe the characteristics of a reptile that differentiate it from other types of animals, then I'm, I've been a lot more clear, right? Okay. Um, write the items so they can understand the task. Um, if you're going to have a criteria for the essay, make sure you share that with students ahead of time. It shouldn't be a surprise. So things like knowing if you're going to be grading for organization and clarity, appropriateness to audience, mechanics, things like grammar. And again, you, um, you might not think that grammar is important, especially if you're not the English teacher. Um, so 
you may not want to assess for grammar, um, but do consider the fact that if it's so ungrammatical, if the spelling is so bad that you can't read it, you will have to take off points, right? If you can't read or understand what they're saying, then you can't grade it, right? So you can't necessarily say, I'm not going to grade for grammar, or I'm not going to grade for spelling, but you can, you do want to clarify what role it will have, right? And then um, tell, tell them how many examples or points they should make. That way it's not a it's not a guessing game for them. Um, if you're only looking for three and they provide 10, then they've spent too much time on that essay, right? And they could have spent it, better spent their time doing other things. Um, indicate approximately how much time they should spend on the, each essay or how long their response should be. This will help them manage their time um, and increase the validity. And you should always put the essay items at the end of the test. They can do the other types of items first and provide enough space. Um, that could also indicate the length that you're expecting. Um, if you're assessing younger students, you want you might want to give them lines to write on. Um, don't give students the option of which essay items to answer. And I actually think Popham in the book did a really good job of explaining this as well. And this is again one of my like pet peeves of teachers because what happens is you think, oh well, here I've got four topics um, in for my chapter. So if I give them the option of four, then I've covered you know four things in my chapter and I have better item sampling. But the thing is you don't because the students aren't answering all four, they're only answering one. And now you've lowered the reliability and validity of your test because you're not comparing all of the students on the same metric. So what you really wanna do is, is tell the students which of those four, you are the teacher, you are the expert, you pick which one of those essays is most important for students to know about. Um, the only exception to this would be if you're giving students a study guide, you could give them, you know, four choices, four options that could be on the test and then only have one of them be on the test. That would be fine. But you need to tell them which one they're answering on that specific test. Do not give them a choice, right? Um, okay. So next one, um, outline what co constitutes a good or acceptable answer on this on the scoring guide. And I'm going to ask you to do this in that um, content knowledge um, instrument that you're turning in. So it could be a full rubric. It could be a checklist or a scoring guide. Again, you're clarifying that role of mechanics and grammar. Um, you should share this with students prior to the assessment, whether it's the actual rubric or if it's just a, um, a you know, a description in the item itself. You might use the same rubric every time in an essay in your class. They know ahead of time. You want to be you want to be systematically grading. You want to keep the identity of students anonymous while you're assessing them. So you know if it's on the last page of the test, don't flip over to the front page to see who whose it is. Just try to grade all of their essays, right? If you have more than one essay, you should grade all of the first essay first, and then all of the second essay. The only exception to this is if you need to differentiate scoring. So if you have an English language learner, you might need to assess their essay in a di little bit of a different way to account for their um, their acquisition of English, or if you have a student with exceptionalities, um, again, you might be assessing theirs in a different way to um, accommodate their IEP, their um, educational instructional plan. So just be thinking about how you can keep that anonymous to try to lower the bias that you might see in those tests. Okay, so that's how to write an essay. We're nearing the end of all of these how to write item types. I'm really looking forward to seeing how you guys come up with really amazing um, content knowledge instruments this week. And um, again, email me if you have questions. Have a great week. Bye.